back to another short and sweet where the reviews are short. And it's really sweet that they shared it with us. Sarah, I got a question for you. What do the USA, the UK, the Epsom Derby, Queen Elizabeth II, Winston Churchill, and the Beatles all have in common? I can't say that I know the answer to that, Chad, but I'm assuming it has something to do with this. It does, yes. As all good stories do, it started with a horse. That was all off the top of my head, by the way. Oh, that was not pre-written at all on any sort of marketing. It's really sweet that Never Say Die shared their new ride with us. Yeah, we actually were fortunate enough when we were in Ireland. We spent a little time at the end of our trip, uh, popped over to London, and went out into the English countryside to visit the Never Say Die folks at their White Peak Distillery out there. Yeah. Well, it was not their White Peak Distillery. They partner with White Peak Distillery to age and bottle the Never Say Die whiskey out there. Ooh, nice. So Very like nice a horse club, right? It was beautiful Clop. out there, I'll have to say. Oh yeah, it was. The English countryside. <sighs> so all that, you know, stuff in the beginning about Queen Elizabeth and the Beatles and all that, if you want to know that story, we did a review on the bourbon um, several months ago. You can the, go look that up. Go look that up. It's got the full story. If we tell the full story here, it's not going to be short and sweet. Right, exactly. So let's get so. to it. 105 proof, uh, non age stated mm -hmm. and sourced, Kentucky sourced, um, mm -hmm. and then shipped to England and aged for an undisclosed amount of time in the English countryside. That's right. That is their, that's their deal. That's yeah, their so spiel. Kentucky and uh, England. For a rye, this has a lot of sweetness on the nose. It does. Like hints of mint and cherry, but mostly sweet, a sweetness. This is one that I would pull pine uh, out there. I could see y that. You know, yes. Uh, mintiness, but yeah, like you're, you're walking through a pine forest. Very much like a forest after it rains. Mm -hmm. Well, does it taste like a forest after it rains? I don't know. Let's, Let's find, find out. out to you, hell. Sarah, I'm in a pine forest. It has rained. I'm walking through it. And I'm eating I a mean, chocolate bar. Or actually, I'm eating a granola bar that has chocolate chips in it. There you go. Yeah. There's definitely a er one. an earthiness to this. Uh, that pine, slight effervescence, um, mintness is there. I mean, Just it is a, a rye. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it is a 56% rye, so not super high rye, mm -hmm. um, but you know, over the barely legal limit. Kentucky style rye. Yeah, 33% mm -hmm. corn, 11% malted barley, which is yeah. I think where that like earthy chocolatey note is coming barley. in. Um, that malted barley content being, you know, at 11%. Mm. And so that's a significant amount. 105 proof? 105 proof. I was saying it's it's got See, a, a decent transatlantic <laughs> <laughs> hug, hug and uh, a pretty long, yeah, finish. I mean, if you watch the channel for any good length of time, you'll know that when we talk about rise, proof is not as important. I mean, it's not always important anyways, but generally we tend to gravitate towards higher proof bourbons just from like a textural standpoint mm -hmm. and a finish standpoint. Rise, we found don't need to be aged as long uh, in order to gain as much character as bourbon and sure. they don't need to be as high of proof mm -hmm. to get all the, that same characteristics. So. Right, yeah. Well, the 105 does not, I think it's perfect for this. It's feeling pretty perfect. Nice warm chest feels here. Second sip. Mm. This is atmospheric. Like I want to go to the Redwood Forest and drink this rye. <laughs> and I don't think Redwood Empire would be very excited about me saying that. I'm pretty sure that's what they want, but I haven't tried their cast strength products, so I don't know if that's true. Right. And if you're out there, let me know. <laughs> no, but yeah, you know, like many whiskeys do, they can take you to a time or a place or a time and a place, uh, your place or mine. And this is this is doing this. Mm. Uh, I'm very much in a forest. I could be around a you know a campfire. Um, There's smoking, a bear nearby. Smokey the bear says only you can prevent forest fires. Mm. But yeah, it's definitely bringing up a, a time and a place. Yeah. And I love it when when ones do that. So because you know you can talk about pairing. You can pair with food. You can pair with other. You can pair with events. Or, mm. or places. Uh, I think too. so. That's a great yeah. point, Chad. People don't talk about that a lot. Like sometimes I'll say, if I was having a garden party or something like a, mm -hmm. an outdoor or like an outdoor brunch or something, and I wanted mm -hmm. to serve like a whiskey cocktail, maybe I would use this pour. Or if I was going to do something neat. Now, don't worry about why you're drinking whiskey neat at brunch. Just mind your don't business. Don't worry about it. Mind your business. Stop trying to step all over my fun. Why are you even questioning? But if, again, like sometimes we talk about like good fall pours, mm -hmm. and I think this would be a good fall pour, again, like if you're in a yes. colder weather climate out in the forest. It's or really you would start to wear a hoodie. A hoodie. Yeah. Yeah, this is good hoodie weather <laughs> wherever you are, whatever hoodie weather is to you. Speaking of good hoodies, I can tell you where you can get them. It's whiskeyambitions.com. It's where you can get the hoodie, because it is a hoodie, see? Mm -hmm. The Sarah's wearing uh, the t-shirt that I'm wearing. Of course, the Glen Cairns we're drinking from, all of our glassware, including our mini Glens and our uh, Copitas and Rocks glasses. And our new tasting kit. Yeah, that new tasting kit, that's, uh, you get uh, four Glen Cairns and then, uh, you know, 
devices for, for tasting uh, there as well. But also our bottle cut candles, more that's always coming soon. That's at whiskeyambitions.com. And you can become a patron at patreon.com slash night and join our community for as little as one buck a month. And that is where you get exclusive access to after the episode content, our barrel picks, uh, opportunities to participate in events, and more. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna let it just sit there for about 10 minutes. We're gonna see what happens as it opens up in the glass. I don't wanna let it sit. <laughs> and we'll be right back. And we're back. All right, 10 minutes. See what you have done to this whiskey. Smell a little bit more earthy. I'm getting like, you know, if you stick a marshmallow in the fire and you catch it on fire and it gets the char on the outside, but sure. it's still like that charred sweet. Yeah, that's what I'm getting. Mm -hmm. Look, Chad, here's what I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what happens to that whiskey when it leaves its Kentucky source and which we like. There's, we've deductive reasoning where that has come from, and uh, we know that we like that source, so I don't know what happens when it leaves that source, goes across the ocean, and rests for however much time it rests in England. But right. I will say, I like the outcome. So I don't know yeah. how much that contributes to what's in that gla this glass, but I can say that I like what's in this glass yeah. a lot. Yeah, for sure. Which makes me feel much better about the price mm. that, that this costs. It's uh, it's 85. Yeah, suggested retail is is 85, and that is more on on the upper end for you know for specs wise and on H dated and 105 proof mm -hmm. rye. But rye is a more expensive grain. Um, it does have, in our opinion, like a pretty perfect proof for what's coming out of the glass. Sure. And non H dated isn't isn't everything. You know, sure. there's sort of guidelines age that is. Yeah, I think. I would be more hesitant about that price if I did, I mean, obviously if I didn't like what was in here, mm. but I do really like what's in here. Again, I think you gotta consider like some of that 85 is covering that, it moving across the ocean and being stored in the English countryside. Yes. Obviously that's going to have some effect on it. I just can't, we, there's no way to prove how m much uh, from here. I really enjoy it. I would buy this bottle again. Yeah, because- you I got, would buy this bottle. Same, and you also have to think, um, it's not just the fact that it's stored for a period of time over in England, it's that trip across the sea. It's sort of like a little mini ocean voyage, which we know some other whiskeys have done. Uh, so that transportation, the jostling and, and so forth, does have some impact. We've actually tasted some studies, uh, control versus mm -hmm. ones that have been, and, and we believe that it does have an impact on it. So you're also getting that um, in its trip over there, which at, is nice. At $85, like this is not one that I would reach for all the time for a cocktail, but man, in a spirit for a cocktail, like an old fashioned or a Manhattan. My preference is a black Manhattan with the chocolate and earthy notes that are in this mm. and that proof. Mm -hmm. Oh, this would sing. There that's what are. I want to make with it. Oh, I like it. I like it. Well, hey, that's where we better leave it. If you haven't subscribed to this already, you can do so by clicking right up here. There's suggestions of other videos down here and we hope to see you over there in one of those. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Chad. Thank you. Never say die. Until next time, drink more rye. That rhymed. Mm.